You're part of it on the text, 81333, start your message with HW. I'm malcolm.boyden at bbc.co.uk. And I'm excited. Well, why wouldn't you be excited? It's the online auction listing we've all been waiting for. Where else would you see online an item described as massive? Good start. Made of cheaper material. I'm starting to like it. And being of a horrid style. That's right. The ugly yellow handbag of Great Whitley is back. A handbag? Yes, a handbag, dear. What's the great ugly yellow handbag? Of Great Whitley, I hear you cry. Well, it all started when June bought it and she gave it to Jill and she thought, oh, I could raise a bit of money here for the Great Whitley church roof. So she came to see me. Remember this? I couldn't quite believe it when June (laughs) gave it to me. I couldn't believe she'd bought it in the first place. Hello, June. Hello, dear. (laughs) Whatever were you doing buying this handbag, June? Oh, I loved it. (laughs) <laughs> oh, I love the colour. I love the, the handle, that lovely plaited handle. Oh, it stinks, I, I got it home and I thought, this is rather large. But I did love it at the time. Okay. I made a mistake and I love the colour because I'm a colourful person. June, you've dropped a clangor here. Oh, I have, haven't I? Yes, it's quite possibly the worst, the most ugly bag I've ever seen in my <laughs> life. <laughs> How much do we want for the world's ugliest handbag? Well, the sky's the limit. We, yeah, need, so. uh, we need a few thousand for the roof, to be honest. June, at least this hideous creation is helping the church. Well, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. But I like big bags I because I have a lot to put in them. Yes. I mean, At my them. age, I've collected a lot of gubbins over the years. And we've had a laugh over it, haven't we, June? Oh, we have, dear. I love a laugh. Well, she likes a laugh. She likes to get her gubbins in a big bag. She bought the world's ugliest handbag, didn't like it when she got it home, and that's where this story starts. It started out at £3.50 online. As soon as it appeared on this programme, it shot up to 26 quid. Unfortunately for Gemma, in the Forest of Dean, her husband was listening to the show on his tractor and he decided to start a bidding war. He won. And Gemma got the ugliest handbag the world has ever seen. She thought, what shall I do with it? So she put it on eBay for auction for a different charity, a cloth nappy charity, sold to 25 quid to Janica from Norway. She put it back online. (laughs) This time for a neonatal unit in Norway. I asked her, remember her? Lovely lady. How much she thought she could raise? I have no idea. I am looking at the bag at the moment and it truly is an ugly yellow handbag. I want it back in the UK, please. But the thing is, you see, it's raising money, it seems now, all over the world. So despite its atrocious look and its appalling nature, and it is a monstrosity, it is doing good around the world. It's the charm. You know, it, it's so <laughs> ugly, it's got charm. It's so ugly that it can do good. And who knows what will happen next? Who knows? <laughs> we could go global with this bag. You quite possibly could. We knew what happened. It went for a whopping 94 quid to a mystery woman who'd been listening to this show. And that was it. That was the last we heard of the ugly yellow handbag. It wasn't seen, no sight, no sound of it since the middle of May. Nothing. It had gone. Disappeared. Off the face of the earth. Until now, the ugly yellow handbag has reappeared. It's now got its own Facebook page and it's up for auction again. (laughs) Producer Stu has joined me in the studio. He loves this, don't you? (laughs) I do. (laughs) What's happened? Well, um, it's reappeared on Facebook. We were alerted to it earlier this... um, On Facebook, sorry, on eBay. And we were alerted to it earlier this week. It's now got its own Facebook page and there is one hell of a campaign to get it auctioned off for charity again. Um, If you go to the online auction listing, it fills in the gaps. It tells us the story of the ugly yellow handbags months in the wilderness. And apparently this is what happened. It was bought by Jane in Worcester, whose husband has sadly recently passed away from cancer. And she bought the bag with the intention to auction it again, but never got round to it um, because she was sadly still dealing with her grief. She was then contacted by Janneke um, asking to buy the bag back. 
Um, this time to auction for a dear friend who'd just also been diagnosed with cancer, bladder cancer this time. And Jane apparently chose to give the bag back to Yannicka so that uh, Yannicka's friend could auction it. Her name is Natalie, and it's her who's listed the bag again. And I'll just read you a little flavour of her story. Um, she says, I am a mom of four fabulous children, 10-year-old boy, 4-year-old girl, and 20-month-old twins. I'm also married to a marvellous man, my soulmate. But sadly, I received the news that I have advanced bladder cancer, which is in my bones, and my prognosis is poor. In average terms, I have 14 months left to live. Oh. I am devastated, and I cannot believe that I'm going to leave my beautiful family behind, but believe it, I must. Oh. So Natalie is now in possession of the bag, and she goes on to say that she's listed the bag to raise funds for a charity called Team Verico, who are helping her. She says, dig deep. Bid on this monstrosity, the money, every penny will go to Team Verico who are helping cancer patients. Then maybe when you own it, you could think of a cause too. Oh, it's incredible. Incredible. Isn't it, Stu, to think it started in Great Whitley and on this show, and now it's raising even more money. How much is it going for now then? Well, this is what you're not going to believe, Matt. This bag, was it £3.50, I think, yes, when it first came to when us? it came, yeah. It currently has 59 bids on it. And it's going for an amazing £320. Already? And it's still got several days to go. 320 quid. And what people have started doing, Stu, they've started leaving little things in the bag they for have. the next person. So the different people that are owning the bag are now putting things in it along the way. Um, so we are in touch with all the key players. Yeah. Uh, we've currently arranging to get them on the show later this week so we can hear the full story because there's so much more to it than what we've read online and you're not going to believe it, Malcolm. This is an, an amazing thing and we both think this, don't we, Stu? We didn't know, we had no clue when this ugly yellow handbag turned up on the show that A, it would get a life of its own, mm. B, it would raise so much money for good causes and C, it would literally go around the world picking up fans yep. and stories and lots of money and lots of love, Yeah, frankly. And I think I could I'd probably tell you just a glimpse behind the scenes of how we think on the show. When it first came across our desks, we scratched our heads and we looked at it and we didn't really know whether we were going to put it on the show or not. But we did. <laughs> and look where it's gone. I think we should talk to Jill Edmonds. She's the one who started all of this and she's on the line now. Let's speak to her. Let's bring her on the show. Hello, Jill. Yes, Stuart, you should always believe me. <laughs> yes, you should, Stuart. You should always believe Jill. I should have done. Should have done. <laughs> what do you make of this, Jill? Well, I am uh, astonished, privileged to be part of it. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm in awe of, of how far it's gone. To be honest, I was really happy with the £26 pounds yeah. we made for the church roof funds, but that it's gone on to do so much good and to give people a laugh along the way as well yes. um, is just great. And every time we see this thing, this monstrosity, this real stinker of a bag. Every time it reappears, <laughs> it seems to have another fantastic story linked to it, and it seems to be gathering momentum, as you heard Stu said now. People are leaving little things in it for the next person. Yes, now that, uh, my understanding is that that was Jane who bought it when her husband died yeah. to raise money for it. That was her idea, because when she gave it away to be auctioned for another charity she left something in the bag and i thought that, 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 what a great idea i've now been contacted and yesterday i sent off a postcard of the church to show why the roof was so is so important to protect the magnificent baroque interior and so i've i've sent them off a postcard and a little fridge magnet from the church to go in it so that it's, it builds a story but here's my plan malcolm oh go on jill this is a film. I think it is a film. If Calendar Girls can make it... It's a film. ...then we can do this, and I want to yeah. know who's playing you. Oh, now then, Stu. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, who's playing me? Well, I, you know, I started this morning thinking about ob the obvious... Clooney, yeah, but you well, know, he may reason. be a bit old, frankly, yeah, too Malcolm. Old, too old in the head. <laughs> you need a young, vibrant man, don't you? <laughs> Somebody up and coming, I feel. 
Oh, well, I think we should get to work on the script, Jill, don't you? Yes, I think the script is... is well, it's going to write itself, well, more or less. I was just going to say that. We don't need a script because the real story, the real life, is far more interesting, fascinating, incredible than anything we could come up with. If yeah. we wrote it, they'd say it's too far-fetched. And Natalie, who now has the bag and is auctioning it, the lady you heard the story of with the four children, um, she writes a blog, and I've, I've been reading uh, bits of it over the last couple of days since I heard about this the, this new happening and she writes magnificently her writing is beautiful so there's a writer i think it's got legs uh, i think it's got legs and i'm i'm going for angelina jody to play my part yeah you're angelina Jolie. we Clearly. haven't got anybody to play me yet but i'll put it out to the listeners if you don't mind you. <laughs> can angelina Jolie do a worcestershire accent of course though? she can she can do anything she's an actress <laughs> woman she's an actress you could always play yourself of course uh, do, do you think? Yeah, film stardom <laughs> beckons at 36. Oh, no, I could only I could only go to Hollywood in the closed months because the tea rooms are open oh, seven days course, a week yeah, in the, the summer. I can't go away. Think about. Uh, Jill, thank you for starting this. Thank you for being back on and thank you for being part of it and you will remain part of it as long as the bag has a life and it looks as if it's going to have a long one. Thank you, Malcolm. Uh, Jill Edmonds there. Stu, thank you. Uh, we're going to no actually, hopefully, get the new owner on the show, aren't we, Natalie? We are, yeah. We're in touch, um, and we're hoping to speak to them before the end of the week, before the auction ends. Incredible stuff. Thank you for bidding. I'm just going to read what Stu read out one more time, because I think it's incredible. The new owner is Natalie, and she's written, I'm a mom to four fabulous children, a 10-year-old boy, a 4-year-old girl. 20 month old twins. I'm married to a marvellous man, my soulmate. Sadly, I recently received the news that I have advanced bladder cancer, which is now in my bones, and my prognosis is poor. I have about 14 months left to live. I'm devastated. I can't believe that I'm going to leave my beautiful family behind, but believe it, I must. So now I have the bag, and the bag is going to help me raise money for a cancer charity that's given so much to me. Maybe we could dig deep. <laughs>